Take Pause has been made possible by support from the following Community Foundation of Broward funds. And by Broward County Animal Care and Adoption, where you can adopt a new best friend for life. And welcome to yet another episode of Take Pause, a show that's all about adopting and caring for the wonderful pets that have found their way into our hearts. I'm the host of Take Pause, Mike Moscatello, and this is my current co-host, Jinx. With any luck, Jinx won't be my co-host for very long. Hopefully, he'll be adopted from this shelter very soon. When he finally is, it's going to be important for his owners to take him in for a vet visit as soon as possible. Some people think kitties only need to visit the vet if they become ill. But kittens like Jinx here need early preventive care, especially in the way of vaccinations. Plus, it's just good practice to get your pal, um, or pals, <laughs> checked out regularly. A good vet is essential in helping your pet stay as healthy as possible. The importance of vaccinations in your new kitten um, are in that they're going to uh, basically be vaccinated or we're going to give them not antibodies but the actual uh, means for them to develop antibodies to protect them against certain viruses uh, and uh, bacteria that they're going to be exposed to especially in their early stages of life. Um, the vaccines basically that we administer or the protocols usually start at around uh, six to seven weeks is generally when we like to do their first series of vaccinations. Um, the first one that we generally do is a distemper vaccine uh, and we like to schedule these basically three weeks apart. So the first vaccination, if it's let's say done at six weeks, you should schedule veterinary visits three weeks later for three consecutive times so they receive a total of three boosters. It's very important to do that first initial vaccine to protect them, especially against things like upper respiratory infections that we're very familiar with, uh, that many kittens will develop, especially if they were adopted from multi-cat situations, there was potential exposure. Another very important uh, vaccine is rabies. Rabies generally uh, is something that uh, most, if not all counties in the United States require kittens, whether or not they are going to be indoor or outdoor cats, it's important that we receive that uh, vaccination at around 16 weeks. Most counties will uh, actually make it uh, a mandatory vaccine at 16 weeks or four months. It's important to basically watch your, your, your kittens uh, after they get these initial vaccines because these are still new to them to make sure that they're uh, not having any reactions or any problems with those vaccines. So it's always recommended, at least in our practice, that we vaccinate early in the day, preferably not on weekends. We like to start off our new kittens early in the week, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, um, to try to make that part of your schedule. Feline leukemia virus and feline immunodeficiency virus, or otherwise known as FELV and FIV, are two, in very, are two very important illnesses that uh, we need to test uh, your cat and screen for in the initial phases of its life. Um, feline leukemia virus is a very dangerous disease that uh, kittens uh, can acquire just by nose-to-nose -nose contact, sharing water dishes with other siblings or other cats that may have that illness. Um, it is potentially extremely lethal. Uh, most cats that acquire FELV uh, can die before their second or third year of life. About 50% now, I think the latest statistic says that they can, uh, they can uh, run into lethal situations because of that illness. Feline immunodeficiency virus, on the other hand, uh, generally, you know, it is more of an opportunity, it creates an opportunistic situation for diseases to affect the cat with a positive FIV test. Um, they can have uh, dental disease, we find, 
as they become geriatric, uh, it can exacerbate uh, chronic kidney disease. And also we found that FIV in general can uh, basically debilitate them to the degree of uh, developing things like cancer, which is exacerbated by that virus as well. FIV uh, basically is an illness that in many ways is similar uh, being of the same family of retroviruses of human uh, HIV. However, the clear distinction needs to be made that we cannot get any of these uh, FIV or FELV diseases from our cats. Um, it is very important to uh, initially screen your kitten for these illnesses at approximately eight weeks of age is when it's generally recommended. However, um, we like to have our kittens uh, tested even earlier than that, especially if they're going to be introduced in a household where there are other cats and potentially those cats are not protected against that virus uh, via immunizations. Um, the test that we generally uh, use to screen the kittens initially, usually around eight weeks, is the typical time that we try to uh, get the first test at least done, um, is a SNAP test, which generally looks like this test here. Um, this is basically a screening. This will give us, with some pretty uh, good accuracy, in many cases greater than 90% accuracy, uh, to tell us whether or not your cat has been exposed to one of those two illnesses. The test basically upon the results will look here, uh, like at one of our patients here, a blue dot on most of these screenings, and these are generally used by most of us in general practice, will tell us that the test was ran correctly, and a blue dot in one place is what you look for basically on these screenings. So your veterinarian may show you a negative test. You want to make sure that the test has one blue dot because on either side of that is feline leukemia, feline immunodeficiency virus and that's not a good thing when we uh, screen positive for one of those illnesses. It's also generally recommended that your kitten be retested regardless of the results about 60 days or two months later to confirm those uh, previous results. The good news, however, the good news is is that feline leukemia, well, we, you know, no test or vaccine is 100%, but we do uh, have vaccines available to prevent feline leukemia. And those vaccines are generally administered uh, to the kittens, usually at around two months of age. We like to start them with their first of two boosters initially. Um, we give them their first, then three weeks later, we give them their second booster to, make, uh, to allow them to have a strong immunity in the event that they do get exposed to that. That is something you need to discuss with your veterinarian in terms of what the potential exposure for that uh, disease is. Um, and then come up with a, uh, a game plan in terms of vaccine protocols, whether or not that's going to be a need to be repeated every year. Last but most important point about these diseases, feline leukemia is much more transmissible. It's shed in very high concentrations in the saliva and upper respiratory secretions of kittens and cats, adult cats that are affected by it. So feline leukemia basically can be transmitted of course from bite wounds from cats that are affected by it as well as FIV which is usually transmitted by bite wounds but it can also be transmitted uh, in terms of cats sharing water dishes living in close quarters multi-cat households that basically are uh, involved with strong interactions so FELV is much more dangerous of a disease there is prevention for it Talk to your veterinarian about the necessity in terms of keeping him up to date on his immunizations yearly after that first year of life. If you'd like to help support Take Pause through sponsorship or by making a donation, call 754-321-1000 or go to beacon.tv.